Denise Bernier with HRPA, and this is HR Today. And we have Dr. Jody Samra with us here. Um, she is presenting this conference on strategies for mental health in the workplace and the evolution over the past decade or two. So can you tell us about some of the changes you've seen and some of the best practices you've seen emerge in the workplace? Yeah, so I've been leading a national project um, looking at the evolution of Canadian workplace mental health from 2007 until 2017. Um, and it's been really amazing for me to see the amount of developments that we've made collectively as a country over the last 10 years. And, and if we look back to 2007 and prior, really there were no, certainly no existing best practices mm -hmm. within this area. People were starting to talk about issues related to mental health in the workplace, but the focus typically was on focusing on an individual employee that might be struggling. Uh, so a very kind of singular focus. Um, you know, and we know many workplaces um, were and continue to provide good supports to individuals that are struggling in terms of benefits, in terms of support, in terms of accommodation, supporting return to to work. Um, however, what was really grossly lacking was any kind of concerted strategy that paid attention to broader yeah. workplace mental health factors that have the potential to affect anyone within a work environment. Mm -hmm. um, so to give an example, we know that um, let's say you work in a building where there's asbestos in the walls. Um, right? we, we would know from a, a physical health and safety mm -hmm. perspective that we don't just say, oh, we're only going to deal with that problem if we have any employee that's showing symptoms. What we would say was independent of whether or not that's affecting anybody at mm -hmm. this point in time, we need to take some action and we need to mitigate the risk around that. Now similarly, we can apply that to psychological health and safety. So to use another example, we may have a work environment where there's excessive and unreasonable work demands beyond what the average person might be able to do. And, and we can't now say, well, we will only do something about that if we see an individual struggling. Mm -hmm. Workplaces now have an obligation um, to pay attention to those kind of broader work environment factors that we know will affect the health and safety of individual factors. Okay. So things like leadership, um, things like bullying, mm -hmm. harassment, incivility in the workplace, you know, lack of clarity and communication. These are all critical factors that really impact how we feel as individuals working within work environments. Okay, so shifting from being reactive to proactive, is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So so organizations now are much more likely to take proactive approaches. Okay. They're much more likely to offer programs and systems and supports within their work environment. And when we polled individuals and compared um, to survey results from a decade ago, people now say that they realize that there's much less stigma in the workplace, mm -hmm. that mental health issues are talked about in a more positive way. They feel that they get more support from mm -hmm. leaders within their work environment. Managers say that they're much more comfortable and competent in supporting an employee with a mental health issue. So all really kind of positive things. Mm -hmm. um, now certainly there's still a long way to go mm -hmm. in lots of areas for ongoing improvement, but I think what really has both stunned me and warmed my heart, really, is to see how much change can happen in a relatively short period of time. Okay. When we get a group of dedicated individuals and agencies that all work together to say this is something that's important for us to address. Wow, okay. So a lot of great changes already have taken place. What are the next steps that you'd like to see? Well, one of the things that we're seeing is organizations are in early stages of adopting best practices. So one of the, the most pivotal developments that we've had over the last decade has been the development and subsequent release of a national standard for psychological health and safety in the workplace. And I sat on the technical committee that developed that standard and really provides this comprehensive set of guidelines, supports, resources, action strategies that organiz organizations can utilize. And we know that organizations are starting to implement. Um, you know, we know about kind of 10 to 20 percent of organizations are now saying, "Look, we know of the standard. We're starting to incorporate it." Um, the positive thing is the organizations that do take the approach of the standard, their employees say we're feeling more psychologically mm -hmm. healthy and safe. However, it still is a small percentage of organizations that have taken that next step. Mm -hmm. So that feels to be a really important um, and easy first step for people to go to. We have 
the standard. You can access it for free. Um, you know, it exists at the CSA, uh, CSA website, and I encourage people to download it and start to become familiar with what that looks like, and then slowly start to implement components within your work environment. It doesn't have to happen overnight. It certainly doesn't have to happen within a month or even a year. We want people to think about the construct of psychological health and safety as a process. So the same way with physical health and safety, we don't just do it once and say we've dealt with it. <laughs> yeah. We say this is a system and this has become embedded in part of our culture. And that's my hope for what psychological health and safety continues to look like in the next decade. Perfect, okay, thank you so much, Jody. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And I'm Liz Bernier, this is HR Today. Thanks for watching.